Hi everybody. How you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. Uh, it's nice weather here right now. Wouldn't do any good to complain about it. Y'all know that. So uh, hopefully you are staying dry, staying warm, and comfortable. And uh, wherever your situation is. All right. Today's lesson is called Serving One Another. In Galatians 5.13, we read, For you were called to freedom, brethren, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. See, when we provide a service, we are doing good for others. And the greatest service we can do for anyone is to lead them to Christ and, and the saving gospel. Our duty as a Christian is to help people get to heaven. I mean... That's it. That's it. I always say this and I always teach this. What is our job? Our job is to help people get to heaven. I mean, when you just start try and think of any other thing, yeah, our job is to worship God, yeah. But more importantly, it's to help people get to heaven. And really, we cannot come up with anything greater as far as providing a service for anyone. And one of the greatest duties of a Christian can be can perform as a service to a fellow Christian. And that's really the way God designed it in the church. See, in 1 Peter 4, verses 8 and 9, we read, Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins, and be hospital, hospitable to one another without complaint. See, first notice that we are to do this in a fervent manner. The idea of fervent is to do so with all your might and to continue such action as long as necessary. And related words would be like intensity, uh, earnestly, and diligence. And our love should not be a one time or every now and then type of love for others, but it is to be a continual love for each other in our fellowship of Christians. It is this it is the type of love that others see coming from you. Now, when we demonstrate this love, we can, which can be done in many different ways, we are in effect covering many sins. All right, well, how is that possible? Well, see, not only are we helping the ones we love to avoid sin and to motivate them to live right before God, but when we are doing the Lord's work, we have a confidence that we are doing right. And that in itself motivates us to make the effort to avoid sin and to live right before God. So in this case, it's a win-win situation. And of course, uh, we're supposed to be hospitable to each other. The idea of hospitality is to open up our homes and really ourselves to others. And we do this to make them feel like part of the family, uh, to give them a sense of belonging. And when this happens, people will want to stay in such a relationship. And sometimes it's necessary, we know that when church discipline is done properly, what we do is we withdraw the fellowship and deprive the person of this love which is so enjoyable to them. And hopefully by being deprived of this love, perhaps they will understand the error of their way and repent and return to God and start living right again. That's what, what the purpose of church discipline is. And so, yeah, we, we need to look at that sometimes. In 1 Peter 4, 10, as a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. All right, so even though we understand that the Holy Spirit gave special gifts back in those days, that is not what, is, what he's talking about here. The gifts that he's talking about is not the special gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are gifts we have in being able to treat others uh, as we have been discussing. Now, the point is, that we are here to serve each other in any way necessary and possible. And by doing this, we are doing what God commands of us, and we also are demonstrating one of the facets of the grace of God, which is described in many ways. And you know, when you look at that word manifold, when he says the manifold grace of God, 
it's described in many different ways, has many different functions. Sometimes it's just our behaving as Christians gives grace to somebody else. They see it and they can respond to that. And so we, sh we show the grace of God by us doing what God wants us to do. And so sometimes when, when people think about the grace of God, they just think it's just one direction only, straight from God, and there's nothing involved that we can do about that. And that's not true. And then finally, our speech is to be flawless and without reproach. I mean, it, it is to be of such kindness that is, it is as if God is doing the speaking. And while there is some application for preachers to preach the word without error and to teach in its simplicity and accurately so as to not conflict with any of God's word, see, the context of this passage does not apply to our preaching. See, it is our service that is important. And we treat this service as if God himself is doing such. And of course, the end result of all of this action is that God is going to be glorified. Now, we will understand that without Christ and his example, this glory would be wasted. And so Jesus is there, and we're to share in the glory that Jesus has. And Jesus deserves all the glory we can give him and of course God as well. And Jesus said everything you do, you do it to glorify God. So by treating our fellow Christian with love, we are honoring and glorifying God by our actions. See, according to Matthew 5, 16, others are supposed to see this behavior and hopefully they will seek to follow such behavior and be saved. And it is in this that God is glorified. So, very simple lesson day, short lesson for a change, but uh, still it's one that uh, needs to be shared with others and we need to look at these passages and uh, consider them deeply and make sure that we are doing our part in the manifold grace of God. So that's our lesson, uh, do something for God today. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be back again tomorrow with another lesson. Okay, bye-bye for now.